Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the WebEx Contact Center. My name is Patrick Kinane. I'm a Marine, I'm a Cisco Press author, I'm a CCIE, but more importantly for today's topic of discussion, I am a certified WebEx Contact Center expert. Let's go ahead and do an overview of the demo before we actually get into it. So I'll be talking about the agent desktop and how simple it is and how easy it is to use so that our agents can very quickly ramp up and get into work and you know, start taking cases out of the queue, start taking calls, chats, emails, whatever it is that you might have coming into your queue. We'll talk about the customer experience, such as having a live agent, uh, doing live chat, doing uh, a phone call into the queue. We'll talk about all of those things. We'll talk about the agent experience, like handling a customer engagement. From the supervisor side, we can talk about notifications, we can talk about visibility into the platform, like seeing what's going on in the queue. You know, a lot of that will be on the reporting stuff, which is our final tab. But we can talk about call monitoring and call recording and all sorts of stuff as well. So, this is what the agent desktop looks like. Over here to the side, we have widgets. Um, I will show you how my desktop looks. We don't really have any widgets. All we have is the one with the bar charts there. Over here we can change our status from not ready to available and we can also do some outbound calls as well. This is what it looks like for the agent experience when they're handling a contact. Up top we can see some call information. There's more here than what you'll see in the demo later on. Uh, that's because uh, in this slide I was doing a database dip to pull in information from a customer database. And then down here we have Screen Pop which is Google Maps. Now it doesn't need to be Google Maps. It could be, you know, your CRM or your customer website or uh, anything you can fit into an iframe like I have here. Uh, I just chose to do Google Maps. Now, taking a look at some of the supervisor stuff, we got real-time data over here to the left where we can see the agent states, how long they've been in those states, etc. We can even sign them out of the queue if we wanted to or had to. Um, over here to the right, we have some call recording, which I'll take a look at that here in the demo. We have call monitoring where we can barge in, we can do whisper coaching, and then down in the bottom left we have our reporting and analytics which I'll be diving into that and talking about wall boards and dashboards and uh, you know scheduling jobs to have reports sent out to uh, people so that they don't have to be manually generated and, man and manually sent out. If you wanted to take a look at the call flow builder, we, we could absolutely do that, but uh, for today's demo, I won't be doing that. If you would like to take a look at this, please, you know, reach out to your account manager, reach out to your Cisco partner, reach out uh, to uh, whoever you got this video from, reach out to me, and we'll get you a demo set up, a live demo where we can go into this. But moving forward, we'll also talk a little bit about the ability to uh, do routing strategy, time of day routing, you know, if it's after hours, how do you want things to to how do you want the customer experience to be you can manipulate that with our routing strategies and then right here you can see that I have mine set up this one we're looking at is only for Saturday and if you look down at the bottom in call control where it shows the flow it's my after hours transfer to voicemail uh, flow looking at the queue we can do all sorts of stuff with call recording we can allow people to pause and resume um, you know, you can enable or disable recording on the queues, but let's go ahead and jump into a call flow real quick and talk about what our call flow will look like today. So the call will come in, it will hit the contact center, it will go directly to a call queue, and then it will be in the call queue until somebody answers the phone call. Now that's the end of our slides. Let's go ahead and jump into the actual demo. So where I'm going to begin is the customer experience. Coming into my customer website, I'm being prompted because I was on the website for too long, or too long, I think I set it to 30 seconds, and what happens is it will prompt me to engage with a chat. I can also call in or email in. Let's go ahead and go about just doing the chat for now. I'm going to say I want to know about a bill. I'll give my email address. We'll say it's billing. I want to know about my most recent bill. Let's hop over to the contact center agent desktop and take a look at the desktop itself. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to dark mode. You can see there's really not much going on. Here's where I can change my availability. Over here is where we would have widgets, but as you see, I only have the agent performance statistics. That allows our agents to see their average and see how that compares to the agent, to the average of the team as a whole. 
With that said, let's go ahead and go into the available status. And our chat comes in. You can see I get visual and audible notification of their being in the queue. And it comes directly to me and I can do pre-canned responses. Now before I end this chat, I want to show that you can do transfers and you can transfer to agents or you can transfer to queues and you can also do a conference, but for that one you can only conference to agents, you can't conference to a queue. Um, the good thing about it though is that you can conference with anybody, whether they're available or not, and they just choose whether or not they're going to accept the conference. Now, let's go ahead and end that out. I'm going to get put into an auto wrap up, but I'm going to mark that as billing. And now my aux code is there. Let's go ahead and put a call through the queue. Hopefully you can hear the dial tone. And I'm going to hit redial call. And this call is going to come into the queue now, just like how we had it go into the contact Thank center, go into the queue, and then waits for somebody to be available. In this situation, my agent's already available, so the call goes directly to my agent. Now, because I did not do the database tip, there's a lot less information here. But as you saw in the PowerPoint slides before, I did do a database tip and I pulled in a lot of customer information like email, account number, all sorts of stuff like that, all based off of the calling phone number. Now, the agent can put the call on hold. They can do a console or a transfer, very much so just like in the chat that we just looked at. They can pause the recording if need be, say, for example, to collect some credit card information. And they can end the call. But again, there's really not much going on here. So let's go ahead and end that call and switch over to a different team where you will see the entire agent desktop will modify itself, including the icon up here. Because I have two different agent desktops for my two different teams. Now you can see up here that I have my Cisco logo I have the ability to do outbound campaigning. I still have my agent performance statistics here. I have a widget for Google Maps, a widget to see callers in queue. Let's go ahead and put a call in the queue just so that it will pop up. Let me make my agent not ready. It's already not Thank ready. Thank you for calling. And then also we can see agent state real time. Let's go back over here to see the call in queue. I'm sure it will pop up here in a moment. And you can see that it will increment real time every two seconds. So we can see the information about the call. Let me turn this down. And then, um, you know, agent state real time. So we can see who's available, who's idle. If I need to go take a break to go get some water, then it was, it's probably best that I take a look to see how many other people are already taking a break to get some water before I go do the same. Now, let's go ahead and hop over to the supervisor's experience. And we're getting really close to the end here now. When the supervisor first logs in, they get a quick overview of the contact center. How many calls are in the IVR, in the queue, connected, available, etc. All types of configurations can be done here. We can also take a look at the call monitoring. That's where we would do the barge and uh, whisper coaching. Or even we can take a look at our recording management where we can see how easy it is to identify basically uh, all the calls that go to this number right here. So all of those are the same calling phone number, uh, so basically the same customer, calling in at different times, and these are all of their calls that were recorded. And last for today's discussion, but absolutely not least, is reporting and analytics. So if we hop over here, this is a dashboard that I built. It's part of the WebEx Contact Center platform. It's not an add-on. Uh, this is all data that is pulled from the platform. Now you can see I have things like the longest contact currently in queue, how many contacts are in queue, but we really get a lot of really great information about call volume, stats, we can do heat maps, we can see uh, a couple agents that, were, that, that have been on break or not ready for the past 45 minutes. Um, we can see abandoned contact information, or we can even run certain reports just as their own little wallboard. We don't have to do it all as a as a wallboard here, multiple different visualizations inside of one wallboard. We can do it as just the one visualization. And this one is cradle to grave reporting where we can see session IDs, agent IDs, calling phone numbers, 
call phone numbers, call start time, end time, all the way down to whether or not the call was recorded. And we can even see the wrap up code of the call right all the way over here. So we get the entirety of the phone call all here in one report. We can also take these reports and say, for example, this one here, the cradle to grave, we can click on scheduled jobs and then go ahead and actually create a job name for it, do all sorts of other great stuff, get it sent out to people. And then that way we don't have to do this manually. We can have it sent out on a schedule. But this is just scratching the surface with what our contact center can do. This is just showing that it simply works. There's so much more that we can do with our platform. And if you'd like to see any of it, please, please, please reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. Thank you for your time today.